Let's venture away from Star Wars for a moment to quote another movie, Cameron Crowe's rock and roll epic Almost Famous. The only true currency in this bankrupt world is what you share with someone else when you're uncool. And sometimes it's just cool to be uncool, and that's the philosophy behind the Resistance Ski Speeders from The Last Jedi. Rolling. Hey guys, I'm Anthony Bresnikan, and these Ski Speeders are the vehicles we see in The Last Jedi trailer skimming across the salt flats of the mining world of Crate, carving into the white surface and billowing out sort of red, plumy soil underneath. They're flying toward certain doom. The looming silhouettes of ATM-6 walkers, the First Order's bulkier, cannon-equipped version of the AT-ATs, uh, they're called guerrilla walkers for their hunched, knuckle-walking stance. This is what the Resistance is using to face them down. They are the Goliaths, the Ski Speeders, they're the weakest, jankiest versions of a David that the last Jedi filmmakers could come up with. These vehicles can't even stay balanced without the stabilizer strut that drags along the surface, and only the most experienced pilots like Oscar Isaac's Poe Dameron can handle these rigid controls. John Boyega's Finn, who didn't know how to fly at all in The Force Awakens, has been honing his skills, but in the trailer we see him bumping and scraping along the planet's surface as he tries to keep his ski speeder aloft. With the engine in the middle, the cockpit kind of hanging off to the side and another far wing on the other with the ammunition, it looks like one of those old movies of kind of pre-Wright Brothers flying contraptions. These things do not look like they were meant for combat. And that's the point. Writer-director Ryan Johnson wanted to put the resistance at a disadvantage to up the stakes and heighten the drama by making the heroes the weaker force. As Pablo Hidalgo of the Lucasfilm Story Group told me, the ski speeders are, and I'm quoting him here, basically heaps of crap. <laughs> These are jalopies, rickety and unstable, perhaps originally intended for tilling soil. They're like plows turned into tanks, or crop dusters converted into fighters. The mining world of Crate is the site of an old rebel base dating back decades, time of the original trilogy. And when the new resistance takes shelter there, these are the beat up old ships they find. And as you can see from this Hasbro toy, they even got a lot of the detail. The ski speeders are missing some of these exposed panels here, their gears and circuits you can see, and the jerry-rigged wires on the exterior. The blasters are all sort of crudely attached. These are not weapons of mass destruction. They're weapons of last resort. But you use what you gotta use. The inspiration came from one of Ryan Johnson's earliest ideas for the movie. As a bit of an homage to the snow battle, on Hoth that opens The Empire Strikes Back, The Last Jedi would feature a clash on a white, vacant world, a place that looked like a plain white sheet of paper. Like figure skaters crisscrossing on the ice with their blades, the Resistance ships would cut crimson patterns into the void. The Resistance ski speeder may not look very pretty, but it cuts up a very beautiful battlefield. <laughs>